Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs Daily War Room Briefing. We're here, you're here today again with us on day 62 of the war with uh, Gaza. We are talking about um, a war that started obviously on the 7th of October with the massacre of 1,200 people and then the kidnap of 240 odd. Um, the war is continuing on, just quickly going through the different war fronts as we uh, regularly do. Um, in Gaza, um, the IDF forces are continuing to operate on the ground, um, really pushing forward, not only in the, su in the, the northern area, um, around uh, Sajaia and around Jabalia and those northern areas of the Gaza Strip, but also pushing quickly southwards towards uh, Khan Yunus and Rafah and really operating on the ground and from the air in all of those areas. We are still seeing uh, and the constant fire of rockets from Gaza. Food they claim is running out. Fuel they claim is running out. What doesn't seem to be running out is rockets um, with really large uh, um, uh, stockpiles of rockets being found in all different types of places, in schools, in kindergartens, in homes of either UNRWA employees or UNRWA uh, recipients of UNRWA aid. And, uh, um, and really tremendous amounts of uh, of weaponry what was discovered yesterday by IDF forces in close proximity to a school and to a clinic were a was a stockpile of um, even katusha rockets um long range rockets that uh, uh, were in the possession of uh, the terrorists in the Gaza strip um in the northern area we are continuing on the northern border obviously with Lebanon we are continuing on with this uh, um war of attrition with the Iranian proxy, with Hezbollah. And there too, we are seeing um, the constant flow of both rocket fire and anti-tank fire, um, constantly uh, uh, um, keeping our forces in the north occupied, requiring us to respond with, on, with each day, the response and the, the attacks getting more severe and the response becoming more severe. It would appear that uh, um, the terrorists in the north have uh, uh, decided that they are ready to launch and are preparing to launch a wider scale operation um, and are every day working towards that goal. Um, further afield yesterday, we saw more uh, um, missiles, uh, not rockets, the difference between missiles and rockets being that rockets, you fire them in a general direction and they land wherever they land. Missiles have a, a guided heads. Um, and so we saw more missiles being shot at Israel and Israel South from the region of uh, uh, Yemen, the, the Houthis, obviously, another Iranian uh, proxy that is not only disrupting the uh, um, the free pass naval passage around uh, um, that southern area of the Red Sea, but is also actively involved in sending rockets and, and firing missiles at Israel. Um, in Judea and Samaria, um, a, a, a tense uh, um situation still prevails. The IDF forces are continuing to arrest hundreds of, uh, um, of Hamas terrorists and terrorists from the other terrorist organizations um, so far since the start of the war, just, uh, just two months. Um, in uh, IDF forces uh, um, reported this morning that they have arrested over 2,200 terrorists, half of them, 1,100, um, belonging to Hamas. In Israel, we're enjoying um, this uh, continued calm, what could possibly have been seen as the opportunity for uh, um, terrorism and wide-scale terrorism, as we saw in May uh, 2021, uh, um, erupting also in Israel, has been avoided so far. Um, that is something that we hope will continue on. So today uh, we're joined uh, by my two esteemed guests, by Lenny Ben David of the Jerusalem Center uh, for Public Affairs, um, and by Sheldon Shora, who is a, a um, who is a lawyer, and he was the former chairman and spokesman for the Democrats abroad in Israel. Um, and and what we're, we're going to discuss, and what we're going to try to discuss, really in 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 a little bit more depth, is the question of will the Democratic Party continue to support Israel? Now we asked that question because the the at least the perception in Israel was that the previous Democratic administration under uh, President Obama. Um, was increasingly um, less friendly, almost hostile towards Israel. Um, 
it ended with uh, um, really a, 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 a tremendous slap on uh, uh, to Israel um, with the, um, in, the, in the Security Council of the UN with Resolution 2334, which uh, um, prescribed that the, the base problem for uh, uh, the conflict between Israel and, uh, uh, and, and, our, and our neighbors is not the terrorism and the desire of the terrorists to completely eradicate Israel, but rather the fact that Israelis had returned to their ancestral homeland after 2,000 years and had created settlements, as they're called, um, in, uh, in Judea and Samaria. Um, it completely negated, obviously, the question of well, what happened in Gaza and the Gaza Strip when we uh, um, fully withdrew from the Gaza Strip, whether that and, and, and withdrew all of the settlements and expelled uh, uh, um, uh, some 9,000 Israelis from the Gaza Strip. Did that bring peace, the question mark? Um, already then could have been asked. Um, the answer was obviously uh, no. And so that really is um, where we're standing. And now with the new Biden administration, it seems to be a, con a combination of almost uh, um, a continuing path of uh, the Obama generation uh, uh, and administration to, uh, to a certain degree. And now with uh, the war, really experiencing uh, what I can only uh, uh, assume by many is seen to be a, a, a shift um, in, 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 in opinions and a shift of hearts with the Biden administration really giving Israel tremendous, tremendous support for which obviously uh, Israel is uh, um, and Israel's citizens are truly thankful. But at all the time we're seeing at the same time this uh, uh, um, what appears to be a, a fundamental shift um, in uh, uh, the Democratic Party and turning what used to be support for Israel, um, bi bipartisan support for Israel, into more of a, a, a single party issue. Um, so, Sheldon, thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, um, and, and really, we'd like to be able to, to, to hear your comments on, on that subject. Where has, how has the Democratic Party uh, been uh, developing over the last few years, um, say the last two decades? And, and are we seeing a, a, a shift, uh, as I described, a fundamental shift away from Israel um, on the side of the, the Democratic Party? All right, that's a tall order because you mentioned you went all over the map from <laughs> for the last few decades. Uh, I, I'd like to focus more on what's happening right now. But first of all, I take great umbrage with what you said, that the Democratic Party, especially under the previous Democratic administration, was hostile to Israel. That is totally false. It is a bad imp impression that that some people made, who, people who just look at it superficially. I'll just point out a few quick things. It was that uh, it was under the Obama administration that we Israel received the F-35 planes that were denied it by the Bush administration, that the entire Iron Dome project was pushed forward by the Obama administration. And after the initial funding went out, they were the ones who, it was Obama himself who said, let's give him another $380 million to do the next stage of the development. Uh, the, the, the largest aid package to Israel, 10 year package, uh, $38 billion was pushed through by the Obama administration. Until that very last security resolution that you mentioned, the Obama administration had vetoed every single anti-Israel uh, uh, Security Council resolution, which means that uh, which no other president had done. So I, to say it's hostile is, 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 is false, simply false. There was some hostility, by the way, from the local Israeli administration, for example, the, the prime minister going specifically against uh, Obama's request and went at, by him on his own, went to Congress and spoke against uh, Obama, the president. That was that was something that really. All right. Let's let's not talk about that. There has been a shift against in the Democratic Party. Has there been a weakening uh, towards uh, the state of Israel over the last two decades? I think that is correct. I say that only because there have been polls such as the Gallup poll, which came out in uh, March of this year. Uh, how much of that is relevant right now? That's that's some uh, or will be in the future. And will it make a difference for the democratic support in the uh, in the uh, Israel Hamas war? That's a much more complicated question. And I think that's the question I think that we should focus on. Uh, for one thing, you should know that in the 
that was in when Ob when Biden uh, proposed his $14 billion aid package to Israel, it was the Republicans that were holding it off. The Republicans were the ones who were who were against it. Some of them were fiscal Republicans. Some of them were talking. Uh, it was because of the combination of including Israel and uh, the Ukraine in that package that uh, there was some hostility towards that. But it was with the Republicans. Not a single Democrat, including the progressive squad, nobody on the Democratic Party voted against it. All right. So I think that's that's one thing that's important. Secondly. Uh, and I underline what you said before, uh, President Biden is doing incredible job in giving a lot, a lot of very much needed aid and support to Israel. Personally, he came to Israel within a week and a half after the October 7th massacres. He gave a, a speech that uh, any, nobody, nobody who was pro-Israel could have written anything stronger. There was strong emotion in that. And if there is a question about whether or not there might be a weakening in the Democratic Party. Well, that comes about only because of the fact that President Biden and the Democratic Party and the United States Congress is so overwhelmingly in support of Israel. So if you're going to be anti, you know, then, then you're, you're going up against a, uh, a juggernaut here because the overwhelming feeling is in favor of Israel. That may lessen not only on the side of the Democratic Party, but also on the part of the Republican Party because of the way and the nature that the war is being uh, handled. And I think that one of the reasons is because America is primarily a very moral country. They think of themselves as the good guys. They are on the side of right and, uh, and what's proper. And that's important. So on October 8th, when we got the revelations of what was going on, October 7th, October 8th, and we understood what was happening, there was no question. These Hamas were demon savages who committed unspeakable crimes and are on the side of the wrong and the immoral, and Israel was on the side of the right. There were innocent civilians who were, uh, everyone knows what happened, I don't have to, to uh, go into that. So it was a question of right or wrong, it was clear who was right and clear who was wrong. The things get muddied if there are rights on both sides. And in this case, non-combatant Palestinians who suffer, including women and children, who are consider or favored uh, people to, be, to protect, and if they are suffering and or dying as a result of the continuing uh, war, we're talking about 62 days, where every day in the press, you see only the suffering of the Palestinian. The New York Times headline is always, Israel continues its onslaught and the Palestinians, innocent Palestinians are suffering. That's the headline of the New York Times every morning. They don't headline what happened on October 7th and people's memories fade. And you have now uh, this complication of this additional right, the right of the non-combatant Palestinians not to suffer, not to be killed. And that muddies the waters. And who gets affected by this mostly in the United States? I think it's mostly, well, you see it on the campuses. Mostly it's the young people who are uh, much more emotional, active, and in general, Young people are against the status quo, against their elders. And if the elders, in this case, Congress, favors Israel, well, then they're wrong. And uh, and you hear the same litany over and over again. And and the way, and, 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 I'm, and right now, I'm not sure even how, how this can be, this problem can be solved. I would like to think that the problem could be solved by rational discussion, by presenting the pros and cons, by showing the, reminding the people of the evils of October 7th, and in that way to, uh, on a rational discussion, we can come to some sort of understanding. It's, I don't think it's gonna work. I don't think rationality and reason and even truth has anything now to do with the, uh, with the discussion. I think it's an emotional discussion and if reason was not the source of the 
problem, reason is not going to get us out of the problem. So somehow the uh, it's going to have to deal the the emotion the the moral side of Israel somehow has to reach the emotions of people and to understand it. And that's that's a tall order. That's something you guys are going to have to deal with. And that I, I I thank you obviously for 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 your uh, uh, comments regarding exactly the extent of the of the support of the Obama administration. I would say even further than that, the, the Obama administration also implemented not a small amount of legislation. Um, for example, the first legislation against the the Palestinian authorities pay for slay program was implemented by uh, the Obama uh, administration. Similarly, restrictions on uh, um, on on aid to to UNRWA were implemented by uh, um, the Obama uh, um, uh, administration, but but I think at least the perception in Israel and and therefore I'm I'm glad that you uh, uh, cleared it up was that the Obama administration as a whole was more hostile towards Israel and more acceptive of uh, uh, accepting of the almost what, what what's known as the Palestinian narrative. Now uh, you mentioned the numbers and morality and things like that, which. So, so it brings me to, to, to ask the question within the, the, the Democratic Party and within the leadership of the Democratic Party. It, it used to be a situation where there was a, a fundamental belief in Israel, Israel's morality, um, and in uh, uh, maybe the justness of the cause of Israel, um, which seems to be uh, have been under, uh, uh, undermined. So when, for example, now uh, um, President Biden stands up and says, well, I don't really accept the numbers. Um, that are being bandied around, even by the New York uh, Times. And when we know that really uh, um, understanding and, and Lenny, uh, um, and my co-host, is really a, a, a tremendous authority on the subject of the false nature of, of the Hamas uh, uh, numbers, um, that's something, and, and, and really that, that those levels of casualties, that's something that I, I, I would feel that previously the uh, representatives of the Democratic Party would have been more skeptical about the information that they were, be get, were being given and being fed, and and really more uh, um, solidly as President Biden has been um, behind Israel, knowing that we're facing um, a, a, a terrorist organization uh, um, that has no problem to lie um, and has no uh, 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 qualms really about putting out the information that that it sees fit without ever having to justify itself. So, how do you see that change as it affected uh, the squad, do uh, and 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 really the the the, the more left-handed side of uh, the Democratic Party? Do they see the alternatives being put out on on the subject of basic morality? I've just been uh, um, preparing a lecture for 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 another subject. What would they say, for example, if an Israeli force was caught up in a gun battle in Khan Yunus? 800 or, or 18 Israeli soldiers were killed, but in return, Israel killed a thousand Palestinians. How would the squad respond to that? How would uh, the New York Times respond to that? Um, how, oh, how would I respond to that? I think that's outrageous for Israel to go killing a thousand Palestinians. I think that would be outrageous. When the report came in initially, and we didn't know all the facts then, that Israel bombed a hospital and killed 500 people. I, I, I remember saying at that time, oh my goodness, there's the end of the war because we've lost the moral advantage and the moral edge. To do something that horrible is wrong. And that's why I say we don't know what is going to be within the Democratic Party, within the Republican Party, within, within Congress, within the world, depending upon how this war is conducted. Is It's taking a very long time because Israel is careful. As I understand, they're taking their time specifically to try as to minimize uh, uh, of civilian deaths as much as possible. And uh, that's to their credit. And that's the way they've always acted, sending leaflets and warning people out. This is not something that that's not a way to usually conduct wars. America did not send leaflets over Dresden before the carton bombing or over Hiroshima or over Nagasaki. And I believe that during the entire World War II, Americans never sent food supplies to the German citizens or to the Japanese citizens, nor did they send them fuel. So uh, civilian deaths are predictable in the course of a war. The, the, the Hamas knows it, that when they did their acts of October 7th, 
this would cause civilian deaths for themselves, for their people. And if they don't care about their people, how can you make that demand of the victims of October 7th? Uh, just one other little uh, fact before uh, go through. World War II, I believe the number is 23 million people, soldiers died, soldiers in uniform, 23 million soldiers on both sides. Civilian deaths, 38 million. So that's why I say civilian deaths are predictable and specifically for, the, for Hamas because they use them as human shields and because they put their uh, armaments in hospitals and under schools, et cetera. They're entirely to blame. Now, is that message going out? Or do the, the normal people in the outside world see only that Israel is causing civilian tragedy? Because if it's the latter, then why not go out to protest? Israel should stop doing all that stuff. And I hope Israel will not cause uh, the death of a thousand civilians. But if it does, it changes the uh, the dynamics entirely. So somehow the message has to come out. And the message, as I said, unfortunately, I don't think is, is a rational message, but it's an emotional message. And that's a message, you know, civilians are dying, babies are dying, uh, mothers are dying. And that that's how you affect uh, world opinion. So, so before we uh, uh, go back to the Democratic Party, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just clarify. The, the example that I gave um, before wasn't a theoretical uh, uh, um, example. It was a real-time uh, um, example of, uh, um, of October 1993, U.S. forces in Mogadishu, um, in Somalia, um, who were caught in a crossfire. Um, 18 soldiers, American soldiers were killed. In the course of the battle, they killed 1,000 civilians um, trying to uh, um trying to uh, save their troops and and get them out so it isn't a a, a theoretical uh, question it's really a, a subject of what has been done uh, um, around the world within war situations and whether that is the standard towards to which Israel is held but the laws of war I think and and the examples of of war and and situations like that are are, are a sub or are, are a separate subject the question more is where are we going? Are we going to see, uh, 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 Sheldon, a continued uh, um, support, by long-term support, by the Democratic Party for Israel? Or are these uh, um, almost a, a, a eroded erosion of the, the, the basic acceptance of Israel's right to exist? Is that something which is encroaching on the Democratic Party? I, I think the answer is no. That, that has not been the question of whether the American support for the state of Israel or democratic support for uh, uh, for the state of Israel is solid. It is built up over the years. There's recognition. America was, of course, the first country to recognize the right of Israel's right to exist after the UN partition vote in 1947. This this is this is not a thing. America works, and I'm talking about American general and the country and the Congress. America works on its own self-interest, like every country in the world. What is good for America? Is it better for America to be on the side of the Palestinians or to be on the side of Hamas? Is it better to be on the side of their, their, their strongest democratic ally in the Middle East or should they support a terror organization? I think this on the on the international level, I don't think there's even a question. It's this is a clear question of black and white. It's a different question when you ask, what about Israel versus the Palestinians, the two million plus Palestinians that live in Gaza, and the million plus and the and the and the mil, and the Palestinians who live in the uh, in the formerly the West Bank, Judea and Samaria? What about those? Don't they have a right to live in peace? And now it's already a little more difficult. It's a little more muddied, and. The morality of the of the issue is is twofold. There's rights on the side of the Israelis and the rights on the side of the Palestinians. But if the dynamic changes because Israel were to do something like that was done in Mogadishu, that would change the dynamic. If the if the uh, uh, the uh, Palestinians were to do something again like October seventh, uh, then that would change it against the Palestinians. And the fact that the Hamas has said that this is only a first stage that they plan to repeat the October 7 massacre again and again 
in all different places. And I think that all different places includes outside of the state of Israel. Then it's clear that they they simply have to go. Hamas delendum est. So the the the, the understanding is really that it's a clear alignment with um, the forces fighting against um, what I think is clearly a a, 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 a a an axis of evil, recognizing that all these uh, uh, um, terrorist organizations have their same uh, uh, background, have their same ideological background. Um, and have their same drive, and also have the same patron. Uh, uh, the, the, the patron, obviously, uh, um, being Iran, um, that being the common denominator between um, really Hezbollah, Hamas, and uh, uh, the Houthis, all of the forces now at attacking Israel. Where do you think uh, uh, America, specifically the Democratic Party, sees the alignments of America's interests as regards Iran, its support for terror, um, and and really global terror and and really it's 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 work via its proxies to undermine and and if not destroy even Israel. Well, let's remember that Iran, their first act that they did to announce their presence in the world was to take fifty five American hostages in uh, the American from the American embassy to trash the American embassy, steal all the the documents, and to hold those people hostage for over a year. Uh, that was a to and called America the Great Satan, and clearly defined America as an as an evil uh, that has to be eradicated. And they've said that since day one, and everything they have done since then has has uh, progressed to that uh, stage. America has been weak in fighting the threat of Iran. They've been weak in in even defining or identifying Iran as a threat, uh, and. And the fact that America has, even though they say we will not let uh, Iran have uh, nuclear weapons, has done an inadequate job in assuring that that will happen. Uh, would this hostile act of uh, the uh, of Hamas in, in, in raising a physical threat against the West alert the West to become more vigilant and more proactive in, in uh, reducing the threat that Iran has made in the world. It means in strengthening such bonds as the uh, the Abraham Accords. It means bringing in Saudi Arabia into those accords. And it means doing, if it's necessary, and I think it is necessary, military action to stop Iran. Because if Iran on its own will, they're a train going in one direction. and with no reason for them to break. And that's scary. And do you see that determination in uh, uh, the the Democratic Party as it's also developing um, really to combat Iran and to make sure and ensure that Iran does not develop um, its nuclear capabilities, does not and or, or ceases and desists from um, promoting international terror all the way uh, uh, um, uh, around the globe? Do you see that uh, um, really determination in the Democratic Party? Is it something that we're 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 going to see developing over time? What we what we saw just uh, um, one of the reports um, regarding the timing of the massacre um, really focused on the idea that it was meant to happen um, during Pesach, but was then held off by the Iranians um, due to the ongoing talks with America and the desire to uh, and bring about the the release of. Um, the six billion dollars um, with the the, the 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 U.S. administration. Do you see that determination really to isolate Iran um, and ensure that Iran's capabilities are uh, um, are destroyed, are uh, um, are really uh, um, cut already before they become real? Do you see those talks as a strategic talks for the purpose of realigning the world and bringing it closer to peace? Or do you see those talks uh, as a tactical weapon for getting the, the six billion dollars released, et cetera? Uh, do is there a real intention on the part of Iran to become part of the uh, world of nations? Is there evidence that they do? It, it's certainly when people when things are murky and unclear that gives the right uh, the ability for people who are timid and unwilling to take risks and unwilling to recognize 
direct threats in their face to uh, to act on it. Uh, and and I say this with with respect to the current situation as well. The Hamas has been very very bad neighbors. I mean, twenty thousand rockets they send into this. Uh, balloons, they, people jumping over the fences. They, they have demonstrated time and time again that they're really bad people. But, you know, it, it's easier to just let 20,000 rockets slide. But after October 7, that crosses a line I think that you just cannot go back from. That demonstrates a hostility and a viciousness and a desire to to actually carry out their program, which is screamed out in in the in the Hamas charter as the basic reason for their existence. And here they actually did it and did it in a way that was so savage. That's it. There, there, there cannot be you cannot go. You cannot live with them. They are they are the neighbors from hell and they should go back to where they came from. And, and, and so maybe following on for, for, from that, uh, 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 Sheldon, um, we've also seen a number of attacks on the U.S. fleets in the area um, by the same Houthis um, and really a very, I, I, I don't think the word restrained uh, um, response um, is, is sufficient to, de to define uh, um, the, the, the inaction. Um, do you think that even in the face of that threat to the Houthis, that the threat that we were discussing here, um, just a few days ago, um, with uh, um, with Admiral uh, uh, um, uh, Marom, um, the the one of the previous heads of um, the the Israeli Navy, that that in general threat that the Houthis are, and the Iranian proxies are presenting to freedom of navigation, freedom of the seas. Um, how do you see that also response in the in the framework of well, you understand that this is evil. Evil needs to be combated. And yet there seems to be not a small amount of hesitance. Look, the, the Houthis, we, I don't know what their intention is. One thing they could be doing is simply, you know, shaking a fist, doing some actions to show some support, maybe draw off some power from Israel to divert their attention. And therefore, they're, they show that they're part of the cause. Or do they really intend to do damage? Do they really intend... To join the fight, do they really want to provoke Israel to start invading into Yemen and to to this? The fact that they sent a ballistic missile uh, is very unquieting, but it's it's the same. But it, perhaps it's the same sort of thinking as we did with Hamas. All right, they sent a rocket or two. You know, the Qassam rockets were jokes, so it, it's not so it's not so terrible. Uh, we, we can survive it. They have to make some noise to show that they're they're still nasty people in order to keep their support because their 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 leadership and their power does not stem from quality leadership. It comes from being a hate group, intimidating its own people and shaking a fist and intimidating Israel. So minor things they can do that change on October 7th. And I think that right now it's too early to tell where this is going to go. A lot depends on Israel's conduct in the war, its success in the war. I think that if Israel starts failing in the war, has to withdraw, turn back, you'll see a lot more from the Houthis and you'll see a lot more from Hezbollah because everybody likes to do a winner. Right now, Israel seems to be in charge and is doing as only a matter of time before the, uh, the war ends with Hamas running uh, between its tail with most of its leaders killed. That seems to be the way it's going. And if that's the case, why get involved too much of the war? So all these are facts that will change what will happen. So so one of the uh, um, the, the quotes that I saw today um, in, 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 in uh, um, really uh, um, in, the, in the Wall Street Journal, uh, again, thanks to uh, uh, um, uh, um, Lenny Ben-David, um, is a quote from... Uh, um, from uh, uh, Pramila Japal, uh, um, a Democrat who said that uh, um, she was talking about the, 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 the gender violence, as they call it, um, the rapes that were carried out um, by the Hamas uh, uh, terrorists on October 7th. And she said like this, to quote, I think it's horrific. And I think that rape, sexual assault is horrific. I think it happens in war situations. Terrorist organizations like Hamas obviously are using these, to uh, uh, these as tools. However, and here's the catch. I think we have to be balanced about bringing in the outrages against Palestinians. 
So really, what we're talking about uh, um, from uh, uh, um, uh, um, from uh, uh, Pramila J J Japal is really a, a, a what about is it? It's you can't discuss similar to 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 the comments of the UN Secretary General. You can't discuss um, how the Hamas uh, uh, barbarism was carried out on October seventh um, without providing it with this wider uh, uh, victimhood uh, justification, um, and which is something which seems to be a really a, a flouting any type of uh, uh, basic decency. Um, there is no justification for widespread uh, a murder of civilians, um, targeting civilians, raping babies, children, women, um, men even, um, on the, on, 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 in their homes, in their beds by terrorists. And yet that seems to be a, a, a theme uh, um, by uh, Japal. Is that something which is prevalent within the Democratic Party? Or is that something which we should just see as a uh, um, as the exception to the to the general rule? Okay, first of all, the Democratic Party as a party has always, always supported Israel, has done it in the current administration. The Obama administration, as I said, was very supportive. The Clinton administration was extremely supportive. Uh, there was a thought that after he resigns, he would come to become prime minister of Israel because... Uh, he would get the job. It was it was loved here. He's he was he was a, a great friend, and this goes all the ways back to to Lyndon Johnson, who who was a, a tremendous supporter, and uh, and uh, and uh, also uh, to uh, what's his name to to uh, Harry Truman, who was the first president to recognize the the state of Israel immediately after its uh, uh, the UN vote after May fifteenth, May uh, nineteen forty eight. The Declaration of the State of Israel. So it's not a democratic. It's a it's an it's an overall Ameri uh, uh, American problem. But can we di di distinguish between the non-combatant Palestinians, civilians who suffer, and the Hamas? Now, there's no question that most the Palestinians support Hamas, especially the ones in Gaza. They support it clearly. They uh, they dance in the streets, and it's not just because they're forced to. They turned back the one person who who ran away, and they found him, and they turned him over back to Hamas. They they they're overwhelming. They do. And if I were a Gagazan, you know, who else would you support? Your fellow Arab government or invading Israelis who are killing uh, people and destroying everything? That it makes. Perfect sense to to support them, but just support is not the the issue. It's whether they're combatants or non-combatants. the The number of the fifteen thousand Palestinians who reportedly died, a the number itself is, well, you know, I don't know who was out there counting all those numbers, or if it's the same person who picked the five hundred. That's exactly the died. point. There's no one out there counting the numbers. No or one's counting the numbers, numbers. and and, and they, they made include. them up entirely. Right, and they include combatants. They include they include in those numbers the 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 combatant uh, Hamas. So the the number is ridiculous. It doesn't make sense, but it's a lot. All right, it's a lot, but that's not the issue. The, you don't do this by this. And the, the issue is Israel is under a threat from Hamas. It is a very serious threat. You could argue whether how serious the threat was before October 7th. Today, it's not an, uh, an argument. Israel's under serious threat by Hamas. A guy standing there with a loaded gun points it at you, even shoots. You have a right to get rid of that person. You have a right to stop him. You can in self-defense to, to, to shoot him. If there's a doubt as to whether he intends to carry that out, then you got a problem. But here there's no doubt. He is forcibly and killing you and has killed and intends to kill again. You have the right of self-defense to get rid of that of that problem. So Israel, uh, again, you separate out the problems of the non-combatants who really should not be subject to, to uh, all the problems that it has. But the way to solve that problem is not by Israel withdrawing and going back and saying, OK, please don't do it again. That's not going to work. The way of doing it and the way of self-defense and the proportional response of self-defense is to get rid of Hamas.
to, to put a different administration inside. And the administration may turn to be hostile. They may turn out to be jihadists, but they haven't done anything wrong yet. You can't punish them. Hamas, absolutely you can punish them. Absolutely they should not be in power anymore. And absolutely they must go. So the growing support within the uh, the Democratic Party for this idea of uh, um, really a, a a Palestinian state and and the and the the, the statements that we've heard um, also from uh, um, the Biden administration, uh, some of it being rolled back uh, uh, to a certain degree. That even after the war with Hamas, what they would like to see is the uh, uh, the installation of the Palestinian Authority as the authorities in 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 Gaza. Is that something which you see as being part of this uh, uh, drive of the Democratic Party, or is it something of uh, an idea of this administration um, on its own? I think it was just a, 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 a solution. If you get rid of Hamas, who's going to run the show? Well, the Palestinian Authority has a working government of sorts. So let them go in, because after all, they're Arabs. You don't want Israel to dictate or to control the entire area anymore. You want them to have autonomy at least, and you want them to be controlled by other people. No one else has stepped up. So I think that was an easy solution. I think that under the current uh, way that uh, the Palestinian Authority operates, it's not entirely a satisfactory solution. The Palestinian Authority charter has not been physically changed. They, that uh, they want to um, embrace the entire state of Israel, that they want to eliminate the state of Israel. They're not as aggressive militarily as Hamas is. Uh, so that's why they're still around and they're not being pushed out like hopefully Hamas will be pushed out because they haven't done that that level of this. Although in the past, when the PLO first came into power, and that's how they came into power, they did so by acts of terrorism. But until there is that change and the and there is a clear renunciation of violence against the state of Israel, a clear renunciation of the the attempt to eliminate the state of Israel, of uh, and, and a willingness to live in a two state solution, meaning two friendly states living side by side. If they get rid of that jihadist, they get rid of that anti-Israeli. Promotion, but they haven't done that. So to talk in theoretics at this point is, is unclear. How Gaza should be administered afterwards, I don't know. It needs an administration. The people there are not going to be self-governing and nice and not steal from each other and not kill each other. You need some police force in there. You need some administration. But again, from the example of World War II, there were Two countries, Japan and Germany, were so hostile to America; it's unbelievable. And yet, after the uh, the after America had come in and had administered both Japan and Germany and instilled new constitutions for both, which made them democratic uh, countries, it uh, it changed. And Germany and and, and uh, Japan are, are are among the the foremost friendliest and and valuable members of the West. And it was that type of thinking, however, in the Middle East that drove George Bush to attack Iraq, to bring uh, uh, democracy and the blessings of freedom to Iraq and also to Afghanistan. And, uh, and uh, Johnson and Kennedy's attempt to do the same in Vietnam. And all three attempts failed miserably. So what's gonna happen? Indeed, that uh, uh, seems to be an endemic problem that uh, uh, regime changes over the world and around the world have been traditionally, I think, unsuccessful, with the exception, uh, um, really, of uh, um, post-World War II um, Europe, where, where, the, um, where I think the key factor was the complete eradication of the previous uh, leadership and, uh, um, and a general consensus that that ideology could no longer be allowed to uh, um, uh, um, uh, to exist, and let alone um, be part of any of the the, the governing uh, um, bodies. Um, that is, uh, um, it's amazing uh, uh, every day. Uh, unfortunately, how quickly the time goes by, as they say, when you're enjoying. Um, I, I, I thank you, Sheldon, uh, uh, for your comments. I, I, I think that this is something which needs further. 
um, understanding both within Israeli society and, and really the, the, the wider approach as to how exactly um, does the support of America both influence um, Israel and how it's really based on American interests and, and how the different possibly parties, um, as you have two people and you have two different opinions as to what is the best approach, how the different parties in America see it. But I'm, I think I'm uh, uh, very encouraged to hear that you believe that the, 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 the stalwart basic support for Israel um, will continue on as a uh, really as a fundamental of the Democratic Party or for, also for, 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 for years to come. And that we're not, as is often um, and claimed in Israel and, and, and in some circles, that Israel is losing that popular support of and, and bipartisan support of both uh, the Democrats and, uh, uh, um, and the Republicans. If you want to leave us just with just a, a, a closing thought uh, um, for b b before we before we finish, uh, no, I think the I think I said what I I said. I think that the uh, the Democratic Party does have as a progressive country a party, and and it is a party that always has fought vigorously in debate between themselves and fought vigorously. Uh, there were pulls left and right. I go back in history, and it's, it, it happens all the time. But I think that there is general consensus within the Democratic Party, general consensus within Congress and with Americans. And I, I think that the, if the, as I said, the, the moral issue, I think, is one of the issues that propels uh, American support. And if that moral issue is muddied, if, if too many people, innocent Palestinians, as they're called, or non-combatant civilians, die, and the and the uh, and you do not win, and you do not get the goals. If Israel does not get the goals that it's entered into and loses, things could change. So I just hope that the the war progresses as I hope it would. And uh, if it does, then it should. Uh, I hopefully will have a, a good uh, outcome. So, uh, um, with that, obviously, uh, we would all join you in uh, in wishing that we do actually manage um, to destroy uh, uh, the Hamas terrorist organization because it is the source of all evil, and that to the greatest extent possible. Obviously, we can avoid causing uh, um, civilian damages. That is obviously something which uh, the idea forces are doing all day, every day, trying to limit the uh, the, the collateral damage, as it's called um, in international law, um, that's being caused as the military targets, which are so so heavily embedded within the civilian and urban environments uh, by the terrorists are being, uh, are being attacked. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, um, we will be back with you again on Sunday. Um, tomorrow, obviously, uh, Shabbat, um, starting early in Israel. So, we won't be able to have our regular broadcast. Um, we wish uh, um, all of our uh, um, audience who are celebrating a happy Hanukkah starting tonight um, around the world. And uh, we will see you uh, again on Sunday.